Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here to compare the Bayer Dynamic MMX200 wireless with the Logitech G Pro X2 Lightspeed. Now these are two fantastic premium wireless headsets that are well worth comparing and thinking about if you're planning on purchasing a new headset and are looking for something really fantastic. They both have great sound, great comfort and great compatibility as well as some other interesting things that make them worth considering. I'm going to compare them now and talk about them in a little bit of depth and talk about the features side by side what I like and don't like about them and more as well as doing a microphone test later on in the video so you can get an idea of the quality of that. I will say immediately though that I'm using the mic from the Bayer Dynamic headset for this voiceover right now so you can hear immediately that this has a fantastic microphone and it beats the Logitech G Pro X2 Lightspeed hands down in the microphone department no question. The Logitech headset does have its own things where it beats the Bayer headset with a bit more flexibility in terms of the connectivity and comfort and options in that area and I'll talk about more about that in a minute. It also is the more stylish of the two headsets with that brushed aluminium finish on the outer with the Logitech G logo on it as well. You'll see that you have Bluetooth connectivity as well as Lightspeed wireless, but you'll also notice that it comes with a 3.5 millimeter cable included in the box, which means that you can connect directly to the headset and also to the wireless dongle, which I'll show you in a second, because that's particularly interesting and useful. You have some controls on the headset allowing you to adjust the volume from Bluetooth, for example, and you can switch between Bluetooth and wireless modes. Sadly, you can't run both wireless and Bluetooth at the same time, so you can't mix those audio sources together. You can't do that with Bayer Dynamic headset either, which is a shame because you can do it with some Steel Series headsets, so it's a shame that both these brands don't do the same there. On the headset itself, you'll see you have a 3.5mm jack, as well as a jack for the microphone, which is removable, button for Bluetooth, and a mic mute button alongside the charging port and a volume wheel. The Bayer Dynamic MMX200 wireless uses a USB-C low latency dongle which you can connect to a pixel phone for example or directly to your pc and then have that low latency connection for a really good sound and a solid connection assuming that you're in good range i have found that the range on this isn't very long so if you step out of the room for example you might lose that signal now more logically you'd connect via bluetooth and this headset sports bluetooth 5.3 so you can pair it with your bluetooth device and then you can turn it into Bluetooth mode and you can play music that way. The Bayer Dynamic headset has a lot more controls on it than a Logitech G Pro X2 Lightspeed. The buttons are multifunction, so you have the power button, the mode switching button, the volume wheel, all can be used for different things like pausing and playing music, answering calls, turning augmented mode on and off and other highlights as well as muting the microphone. You'll see there's also an LED indicator around the volume wheel to let you know what mode you're in, how much battery life you've got left, and other things at a glance. However, I did note in my review that the controls are a little bit finicky. You have to kind of remember what button presses you're meant to be doing. Some of them are long presses, some of them are multiple presses, some of them are brief taps. So it's a bit confusing. I found that user experience to not be that great. For example, to switch into Bluetooth mode, you have to press the Bluetooth button three times in quick succession, then to switch back to the wireless mode, you have to press it two times in quick succession. It's not that intuitive. It's a little bit fiddly and hard to get used to, but the power on, power off, instant connection to the dongle is just fine. Now the G Pro X2 Lightspeed has this Lightspeed dongle included with it, which as you can see is a bit bigger than the dongle included with the Bayer Dynamic headset. It's USB-A, but it also is interesting because it has a 3.5 millimeter jack on it. So that means that you can do other things with it beyond just having that wireless connection. So yes, it's a wireless dongle, plug it into the PC and then you can easily connect to it and then you can make the most of Logitech sound there. It also has a DTS, for example, and you can customize a lot of different sound profiles within G-Hub. But if you plug it into your PC, as an example here, plug that in and then you can connect up the 3.5 millimeter source to it using the cable that's included. Now this gives you options because you can connect up, for example, an external microphone. So I'm using the HyperX Quadcast S here, for example. So if you don't want to use the Logitech's microphone, you can upgrade and then you can plug in a 3.5 millimeter connection and wirelessly mic monitor. I'm doing it here with the Wave XLR, so you can have an XLR microphone 
and then you can mix in a 3.5 millimeter source so that you can listen through the headset wirelessly but still mic monitor that way so it gives you a lot more options in what you can do with it the Bayer Dynamics USB dongle also comes with an adapter so you can switch that from USB-C into USB-A which is great if you don't have a USB-C port on your PC. It's plug and play and does give you a really easy low latency connection, which I haven't had any problems with when in range. Both of them have a good solid connection when you're sitting close to your PC or in the same room. No problems there whatsoever. I just found the range drops out quite quickly when you step out. Now out of the box, the Bear Dynamic MMX200 wireless offers fantastic sound. Really good positional audio, great bass, a good range of sound. It uses 40mm drivers which are perfectly capable of delivering a good sound across a variety of games. I found it particularly good for playing games like Escape from Tarkov, where footsteps and enemy movement sounds are key to your success in battle and surviving, and it really delivers good sound there, so if that's what's important to you, then this is a great headset and well worth considering. I also really like the Logitech G Pro X2 Lightspeed. There are customizable soundscapes that I talk about in the review in a little bit of depth. I use it for a variety of different games and I found it was really good at delivering good sound there. Same sort of thing with positional audio. It's quite bassy. Some people have said that it's too bassy for them. I personally like a lot of bass in my headset, so I didn't find that a problem. But some others have reported that is an issue, so it's something to bear in mind. I, however, thought the sound was really good. Now, another reason that the G Pro X2 might win out of these two, depending on your personal preferences, is the comfort. You can see that out of the box it comes with two pairs of ear cushions. You have the standard ones which are the faux leather material which you'll notice are quite shallow so they're not as deep as the Bear Dynamics I don't think but they are a bit bigger so that in terms of sort of top to bottom height they're more ear shaped than the Bear Dynamics which as you'll see have a round design to them instead. However you also have included in the box these sort of material ones so you've got a much softer cushioning so it gives you the choice you either have the faux leather which offers some passive noise cancellation or you go for the cloth material which is really soft very comfortable doesn't block out as much sound but perhaps keeps your ears a little bit cooler so it's nice to have both those options in the box included as standard easy to swap between them in the summer or the winter or just personal preference whichever you want to use and all of that is included when you buy the headset so that's a really nice thing i think and something i really like about the logitech g pro x2 also you can see that you can turn and tilt the ear cups really nicely the headband extends nicely and it's really easy to adjust now it might be a bit small some people might think this is a small headset i personally didn't find that but if you have a particularly massive head then it might be problematic maybe i can't comment on it i haven't had that problem but one thing I will say is the ear cups are nowhere near as deep as those on the Bayer Dynamic headset. But they both do have a similar clamping force and a similar design style in terms of having a nice strong metal headband, lots of padding on top and good soft ear cushions. The Bayer Dynamic MMX200 wireless has these really plush faux leather memory foam cushions and a padded headband both of which are removable. You can purchase an additional headband for this headset, and that's a really nice one. But you will notice that the ear cushions are round, so they're not as sort of traditionally ear-shaped, which might be a problem if you've got bigger ears. You might find they're putting pressure on the tops and bottoms of your ear. Not very comfortable. However, you can take off the ear cups, and you can access the drivers from here. And Bayer Dynamic actually has some instructions on how you can take this bit off and access the battery underneath and then be able to replace it. So there's a lot more replaceability with the Bayer Dynamic potentially, which is really nice. I also feel like these ear cushions are very comfortable and have some really good cushioning to them and are a bit deeper than Logitech's headset, meaning that it's more comfortable, but also does some fantastic job of blocking out passively the noise around you. So you can't hear as much of what's going on in the world but you can hear the game more or your music or your films whatever you're doing with it it allows you to just block all that out and enjoy what's going on inside the headset and just soak in the sound which is fantastic and really clean sound with great delivery now the microphones are an important point obviously you can already hear the bear dynamic headset microphone which is, sounds really good it does pick up some of the mouth winds and the hisses from that but generally speaking, it rejects a lot of surrounding noise without any additional processing. Whereas the Logitech G Pro X2, as you'll hear in a second, 
doesn't do as good a job. They're both removable microphones and Logitech is customizable within the software, but out of the box, I found it's nowhere near as good. It's compressed. It doesn't sound as nice. It's not as rich. It's just not as natural sounding. You have to do a lot of tweaks to it within the software to get it sounding nicer. And I've done a video separately on that. I also did a silly video on it controversially perhaps where I took the Black Shark V2 Pro microphone from Razer's headset and put it in the Logitech headset and showed how you could improve the quality of the headset capture on this headset with a different microphone from a competitor <laughs> which sort of speaks to how poor the microphone is compared to the Bear Dynamic which is just fantastic out of the box and that's one of the things about the Bear Dynamic headset is it doesn't require any software it's basically plug and play and you're getting a great sound out of it, both out of the microphone and out of the headset, whereas Logitech requires a little bit more work. Now, Bayer Dynamics MMX 200 Wireless also has some other things. You'll see that there are holes on either side of the headset. Those are actually microphones, and that's for augmented mode, which is where you press the button on the volume wheel for two seconds, and it puts it into augmented mode so you can hear the world around you a bit more. It's kind of similar to turning active noise cancellation off so you can suddenly hear what's going on but actually it uses the external mics to then just let you hear the world which is weird one thing is that the microphone doesn't have side tone as standard so you can't actually hear yourself when you're wearing the headset unless you're in that mode and then the microphones pick up your voice which is a strange thing however you can see the fit of the headset and how it sits on the head and it is quite comfortable in that way and got some good cushioning although you might find your ears get a little bit toasty. And the downside is obviously that you might end up shouting with all that passive noise cancellation. The ear cups also don't tilt side to side like they do on the Logitech headset. So it's a little bit stiffer, but it also has got some good clamping force to it. And I do find it comfortable to wear for quite some time. Both of them are very comparable in that way. They both have the similar sort of clamping force, similar sort of weight to them in terms of how they fit and feel on the head. I think the comfort is quite comparable. The design style is pretty comparable in that way as well. Now, it's worth talking about battery life because the Bear Dynamic is said to get around 35 hours before you need to charge it, whereas the Logitech G Pro X2 Lightspeed has about 50 hours is the claim, but actually people have managed to get a lot more out of it. I found that with either headset, I wasn't charging them very often, which is obviously a benefit. If you don't have to plug it in and charge it, then that's a bonus. But you do get notified when you do need to, so it's never really a problem running low, and it's not too much of a hassle in that way either. So they're both great for a multitude of reasons. And here's a mic test so you can hear those now. This is the G-Pro X2 Lightspeed. This is the headset in default mode. So you can see G-Hub on the right-hand side here where you can go in to tweak the various different settings. But for the sake of fairness, I wanted to start out without any effects applied. So you can see we have no blue voice turned on. This is just the default settings as it sounds out of the box. Obviously, I've got the windshield on, but this gives you an idea of the quality of the microphone. You can then go in and adjust various other things by enabling the blue voice. But if you turn it on, you'll see that we can change some of the sounds. I've hilariously got it set to bass boost here, but Broadcaster 1 and Broadcaster 2 are pretty good soundscapes. They give a rich sound to the microphone, and there are also other ones, obviously crisp and warm, classic radio. It's worth going through and sort of testing those out to see which one works for you. And then you can get into signal cleanup, which includes things like noise reduction, noise gate, compressor settings, DS or depopper, and limiter. You can tweak those settings and adjust them to block out some of that external noise and eliminate that. Obviously, without those turned on, you probably get a cleaner sound. But if you're finding that you've got a lot of AC and other things that are causing problems, this is what the microphone sounds like, though. And once again, if I disable blue voice, you can hear that as standard. And this is the Bayer Dynamic MMX 200 wireless straight out of the box. So this is what it sounds like out of the box. You don't need to apply any settings to it. You don't need to do anything. All I've done is adjust the volume when I first connected the headset. Now, otherwise, you're not applying anything. So there's no software to download. There's no tweaks to do. It just sounds fantastic straight out of the box. And that's one of the nice things about this headset is just 
the plug and play nature of it. There's no need to worry about different profiles and other things and mess about trying to get things sounding right. It just sounds clean out of the box. The sound in the headset is great and the sound in the microphone is great. And it's very rare that you find a headset with a decent microphone that does a good job of eliminating other noise because it does do a good job of suppressing things like keyboard sounds and other things that might be picked up by your microphone otherwise. It does have a windshield, and as you can hear, it does pick up some of the mouth noise in terms of the wind and the S's and things like that. But for a headset mic, it's pretty special. Hopefully you found this video useful and a good comparison between the two headsets. Obviously, what you're going to prefer is going to vary depending on which of the features you want out of your headset. I like both these headsets for different reasons, so I want it to be as objective as possible with this. I'll leave links to the reviews in the description so you can find out more about them. And if you enjoyed, let me know in the comments down below and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.